Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to show you an example game on the 9x9 board, and I'm going to talk about some ideas that will be coming up in the 9x9 as well as larger boards. So it's some general ideas about how to uh, play the game. Opening strategy too. So uh, just to get into it, I'll start with Black's first move. Black plays here. First of all, it's a good idea quite often to play your first moves fairly close to the corner. And when I say that, I'm talking about the third and fourth lines. So that's counting from the edge of the board. This line here would be the third line. And this line here would be the fourth line. So it's a bit cramped on the 9x9 board. It will be more and more open space as the boards get bigger. When Black plays a few lines away from the edge of the board, Black is actually controlling this area that is closer to the edge of the board. And when Black plays uh, this point, which is often called the 3-3 point because it's three lines from each side there, it has a very strong control on the corner. So a very strong control on this area. In my last video in this series, I was talking about making two eyes. It will be completely impossible for White to try to make two eyes inside this circle that I've made in the corner of the board. So it's um, pretty much sure of being Black's territory. Another point I want to get into is that it's customary to play in the upper right part of the board, and this is just considered polite. It's, there's no strategic value, really, to playing in the upper right when compared to, for instance, the uh, upper left or the, or, or the lower left. Since the board is symmetrical, it's the same meaning. It's considered polite to play in the upper right. And so that would be this triangle, the right half of the upper right, including these lines, this fifth line here, um, any of these points, including the center of the board. In my first example game, I did show you a game where Black played the first move in the center of the board. That is, especially on a 9x9 board, that is a very valid choice for Black. It seems to be a strong opening. It's more common, actually, in the larger boards for Black to play closer to the corner. So this 3-3 three, three point is one example of that. And White's next move here. After Black has played one move, the board is not symmetrical, and so White is free to play whatever corner White wants to play. So this is often called the 3-4 point, because it's the third line from this side, and the fourth line from this side. So that's four lines. And so it's a very common move that people would play as their first move towards the corner. And playing something like this, for instance, on the first line or even on the second line, that would be so close to the edge of the board that actually it would be vulnerable instead of controlling anything. So that would be a bad move. It's important to have some distance between the stone and the corner so that this empty area between that stone and the corner is an area where if white comes inside there, Black's going to be able to attack it very strongly. So for instance, if white plays here, Black will play here. This white stone is already in great danger of being captured. So it's very common for both players to be playing their first moves in the corners like this, taking two corners each. The next move is when the players can choose to approach or attack an opponent's corner or to defend one's own. The game move was here, which is an example of protecting your area. At this point, Black has already sort of staked out this area, which is an area where it would probably be a bad idea for White to try to come inside this blue line here. So this right side is considered Black's area. Whether it actually becomes territory or not, it depends on how the players play it out. So for the time being, I would call this Black's area, which is probably going to become territory, but it's not completely guaranteed. If White were to come inside with something like this, it's questionable whether this is going to survive. White's goal here would be to make a territory inside the black area and have two eyes. But for instance, if this kind of continuation happened, White would have trouble dividing this area into two. And so if I were playing black, I would say that this white group is already dead. So I would not really recommend White playing inside here. But if you're interested in seeing how it turns out, there's nothing wrong with trying it out. The only problem is that if it does die, then you will be playing from inside Black's area and making it a larger territory than it was going to be anyway. 
So it seems a reasonable move for white to play here, staking out a white area like this. So white's hoping to capture the left side of the board as white's territory. And similarly to white's last move, black also has the choice of trying to invade white's territory. The game move was here, in which black is building a wall, trying to expand black's territory while reducing white's territory. This is, again, it's a one space jump, uh, which is also something I talked about in my video about connected shapes. So it's a pretty well connected shape there that black has, and black is reducing white's territory instead of going for uh, outright invasion. So for instance, if black had played here, it would have been exciting, but it would have been very difficult also for black to execute because just looking at it directly, this black group is not going to be alive. So black would have to use some high level tactics. I could talk, talk about that maybe in a more advanced video, but in a straightforward fashion, it's probably not going to work for black. So it seems a reasonable move for black to jump here. And black is trying to get into white's territory here while maintaining a connection to black stones on the, on the right there. I might talk about the other connection that black has, which is this stone and this stone. This is called the knight's move. So chess players would recognize that as um, the shape in which the knight jumps in chess. So it's the same thing. It's, it's that shape which is called the knight's move. Although the ghost stones do not move around the board, it does give you the image of a knight jumping. And white answered here to stop black from coming inside white's territory. If white had not played that move and played something elsewhere, then black would have a connected shape moving right into white's territory. So that would be very successful for black. So instead white answers that. Seems very reasonable. Again, black is trying to get in here and also keeping a connected shape. Naturally, white will cover. When your opponent tries to break into your territory like this, it's very important to stop the gap. So now black covers here and black's plan becomes apparent here. Black is building a wall like this to increase the territory on the right. So black has an image of a territory like this on the right, right half of the board. And white will have to worry about the cut here. So these two white stones are diagonal and white has to uh, do something about that because if white plays elsewhere, then black will be able to cut here and attack that white stone, putting it in Atari and probably will win. So this is very similar to something I talked about in a video about uh, chasing stones and capturing stones close to the edge of the board. So it's reasonable that white answered like this. This seems to be a reasonable move. White is still looking at opportunities to move to the right. Black continues by covering that and black has succeeded in building a kind of a wall here. So white switches to this side. This is an attack on black's one space jump. Black wants to answer like this. And if white pushes through here, black can just answer it. And it turns out all of black stones are connected. So black answers here and white plays here. Both players have a general idea of what areas they want to surround. White is playing on the remaining border lines and trying to push white's border to the right here. And uh, hopefully white could get into black's territory if black leaves it. So black will probably cover here to keep this line and keep the territory at this, at this level. White continues here. In this case, white is trying to get into black's territory in this direction. This white stone is diagonally connected up to these stones because if black tries to cut it, then that black stone would be immediately captured by this, this move. So it doesn't work for black. So when white plays here, Black will answer it here. This puts this white stone in Atari. So when you do have these diagonal shapes, at the point white played it now, it was all right because if black plays here, white can capture it. But the moment black plays here, that changes because the marked white stone is now in Atari. And if white does something like this, black just captures the one stone. So that's not gonna work for white. So white connects. And with this, these four stones are connected shape and they're very strong compared to what they were before. If anyone's worried about these two stones being diagonal, that is something I'm gonna be talking about later in the video. So I'll save that for the end of the game. 
for the time being, black has to worry about a cutting point here because these two black stones are diagonal. They're not connected. For instance, if black played away, then white would cut here. And this would be a problem for black because this black stone on the first line, it's an Atari. White is threatening to capture it by playing here. And that would capture the one black stone. Black might try to escape, but trying to escape when you're on the first line is very difficult because it doesn't really increase the number of liberties very well. Black is still in Atari. These two black stones have only one liberty left at this point. You might notice that the two white stones, they have two liberties. So it would be this point and this point. White has two liberties. It means that even if black puts these white stones in Atari, white will take the black stones first. If black tries to escape, again, white can chase from the second line, chase from above. Chasing towards a corner is quite often a very good idea. And black has only one liberty. And when you get to the corner like this, there's no way to expand your, the number of liberties. Even if black plays here, it's still only one liberty. And it's an example of how stones close to the edge of the board can be very vulnerable. So it's very important for black to notice that diagonal there and, and connect it to make a solid connection. So white's going to play the same sequence again. Now white is threatening to get into this black territory. And black can stop that by covering here and putting the one white stone in Atari. And if you notice that it's sort of similar to what happened on the upper side, uh, that's because it's a sequence that happens over and over again at the close to the end of the game. It's a very standard sequence here where white plays this diagonal move, which is connected to the stone on the second line. But the moment black covers it, that white stone is in Atari, and white will play here to connect it. At, after which, black has to do something for this diagonal connection. It's not a connection anymore, because if black plays away, white can cut here. And again, this is chasing the black stone towards the edge of the board. So black will answer here. There's a lot of white stones that are diagonally connected. So when you have shapes like this, it's actually a bit dangerous because black might play here at some point. This would be a double attack. It would be an attack against this diagonal at the same time as an attack against this diagonal. So with this double attack, white would not be able to play in both points and save both both cups. So white, white might play here, after which black would play here. So that's not good. In this case, white would lose this one stone. So when you have two diagonals like that, quite often it's important to, to make it a solid connection, after which all of these white stones, they are connected. The final move that is worth a point is this point. And let's just take a quick look at the black territory. All of these black stones are solidly connected except for this one point, which is diagonal. Quite often you can have one diagonal point. For instance, if white plays here, black can immediately take it, if black even bothers to do so. So that's not a problem. And we'll have white play here. What about that one point where white has a diagonal shape? So there's these two stones are not connected. So white's uh, territory is actually formed with two groups of stones. It's this group of four stones and this larger group of stones, which is a solid wall. Strong players might decide that the game is over at this point and count it, but if black is interested in seeing what happens in the upper left corner, there's no rule that says black is not allowed to, to try it out. So black would maybe cut here. And this was the subject matter of a video I did about capturing stones by chasing them towards the side of the board. White wants to chase this black stone towards the side of the board. White also wants to be careful of White's relatively weak group. So this is kind of a recap of that video because White does not want to chase from this side. Black would attack White first and these stones would be in Atari. They would be on the first line and would have no way to increase their liberties. And in this case, Black would eventually capture these four stones. So that would be a disaster for White. But if White plays from this side, White can keep the two liberties here. White is putting Black in Atari so black might extend here. Again, white wants to play from the relatively weak group, which is this one. This is the one that is in danger of being cornered. This group 
fairly obviously it has a lot of liberties and it's not going to be cornered. So white wants to play from the weak group. White has one, two, three liberties. That's very important that white has a lot of liberties. White's actually increased the number of liberties that white has. It will take three moves for black to capture that white group, and it will take only two moves for white to capture the black group. So in these cases where you have two groups of stones which are both in danger of being captured, we call that a race to capture. And the player with more liberties generally wins this race to capture. So if black plays here, uh, white will cover on the second line, and black has run out of places to go on the second line. If black goes to the first line, this is diagonal, it's not connected. So white can immediately put the three black stones in Atari. So these three black stones have only one liberty left. Connecting here will not help matters because white just takes all five. Black could put the white stones in Atari, but provided white is paying attention, white can take the black stones first. So nothing amounted from that. So although there is that one diagonal point there inside white's territory, it's not going to be an issue. So the players could call it an end here. And if you're using a computer, it would be very easy. The computer would calculate the score for you. When you're playing on, an, on a real board, what you do is you rearrange the stones to make it easier to count. Once the game has agreed to be ended, uh, for instance, these two could go here and this one could go here, and we would have 3 times 9, which is 27 points. Very easy to calculate. And even with a 9 by 9 board, it's easier to do it this way. You might be bothered by the fact that there seems to be a hole here. It doesn't matter when you've both agreed that that's a black territory anyway. So you just make it into a square shape. It's really easy just to multiply and get the territory. So you could do the same with the white territory by taking two stones and putting them here. And you have 3 times 9, which is 27, and you subtract 1. And you would just put this white stone somewhere in the center to signify that you know that that's a white territory. So that's uh, 26 points. Black has 27. Black's won by 1 point. In the previous game that I showed you, I did talk about Komi. Usually people have a 6.5 point Komi, which Black gives to White as a handicap that makes up for the fact that Black has played the first move. So if you count in the Komi, then white has won by five and a half points. So that's it for this example game. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Sign up if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you.